Okay, welcome to this PHP Basics tutorial. In this video I'm going to explain the undefined variable, undefined index, undefined constant messages that you often have probably come across. Um, and I'm also going to talk about error reporting and the reason and why and how to set it to E all. Um, basically these undefined index messages or variable messages like the one I'm demonstrating here appear um, sort of when you try to access a variable or constant or index of an array that is um, that hasn't been given a value yet um, for example if I just show you the code that's generating this page we just have echo var but we've never defined var as anything so PHP gets this line and it just tells us that we are trying to output a variable that doesn't define isn't defined or try to access a variable isn't defined um, you can disable these messages um, and PHP your script will work flawlessly without them uh, without with the error still there that is um, the reason this is not a good idea is say if you made a typo like at the end of a big function like return and then the wrong variable name PHP would just return an empty string or null maybe I think it return an empty string um, and you could spend like so long looking through your logic of your function trying to find out why you were getting an empty string return instead of what you were expecting when all it was is you spelt the variable name wrong um, and this, no this notice message would highlight that immediately so it sort of direct you towards a larger problem with your application um, I'm going to be showing you how to set up error reporting to the correct level uh, in php.ini which is the PHP configuration file I'm going to be showing you that on a Linux server and on a Windows sort of PHP server distribution known as XAMP or XAMP or however you're supposed to say that, I'm not really sure. Um, so if you're using something similar or not quite the same thing, you need to check the location of your php.ini file. Um, for Linux, it will most likely always be the same. Um, so uh, basically, we need to get started. Uh, if I just go to my Windows XP virtual machine and go to my PHP file, see I've got the exact same code, although in this case it's in test.php, and I've also got it open in Google Chrome here. You see I've got the same um, code which is generated, which is causing the same problem. We're getting the same error here, it's just the PHP is hiding it. We're trying to output a variable that doesn't yet have a value, so we're getting. Um, sort of nothing by default, although what's actually happening is PHP is trying to output this, not being able to, and then it's just outputting an empty string. Um, so yeah, what we need to do is configure PHP so, so that it will show this message. I'm going to show you it on Windows first. Um, what we need to be doing is editing our php.ini file, uh, which is in this location. If I just go right the way to our C drive, um, you see we have this XAMP folder, um, in there you have all these horrible folders one of which is PHP if you go into this folder and scroll down a bit you should find php.ini um, make sure it's, it's php.ini not php5.ini um, I made that mistake a moment ago and had to re-record this video um, not a Windows person um, so yeah uh, php.ini that's the file you want to open and when you do so uh, well, I've got two now, so I'll just close this one. Uh, this is the file I opened earlier. Uh, you get this sort of very confusing looking file. Uh, this is actually an any configuration file. Um, so in this file, uh, semicolons mean comment. So if I just sort of remove that, you see we get different syntax highlighting, which would result in error in this case. Um, but basically, I'm going to have another video, by the way, on setting up PHP in a similar way to the way I have it on my development server. I think that'll be quite a useful tutorial. Um, learning about sort of the back end of PHP is also something you're probably going to need to do at some point because the way it's set up can affect your script and portability is an issue. So we can ignore most of this comment stuff for this video anyway. This tells you sort of what you could do in this file, various setup things, blah blah blah, default values. Uh, basically the directive um, setting we're looking for is the error reporting setting. Um, there are quite a few settings, as you can see you can actually turn PHP off here, turn off short open tags, <coughs> can you change the precision, um, they usually have comments to links where you can get more information. So Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, 
Um, eventually we will get to miscellaneous and then error handling and logging in this section. There's loads of information about what this directive does. Um, then there's a list of um, the levels, the values you can specify for the configuration option. Um, e all is what we are going to set um, and that includes all errors and warnings as it tells you here. It tells you also that it includes E strict as of PHP 6. Uh, PHP 6 doesn't exist yet. I'm not sure why this is in the comments. Uh, PHP 6 was planned, uh, although it got so far with development and then it was merged and became PHP 5.3. So I'm not sure if it's actually supposed to be here, but you can just ignore that for now at least. Um, the problem is that by default, um, you see this XAMPP package has E all, and then an, and this little squiggly line means not. So we've got E all, not E notice, and not E depreciated. Um, e depreciated is a good idea because when you try to use a function that has um, been replaced by a newer function, they leave those in PHP for a bit uh, to give people time to update their code. And like the ereg extension, it will throw this e depreciated error. Um, basically, it means don't use this function because it's old. Uh, and there's usually a more, like more uh, better version available with more functionality or with bug fixes or whatever. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do is set the value of this error reporting uh, setting to e all, and we're going to remove all of this other bit, and then just save this file. If you if we now go back to our browser and refresh this page, you'll see that we don't actually get uh, the message. The reason for this is that p the php.ini file is only sort of read in. The configuration options are only loaded when PHP starts up as part of the web server. So what we're going to need to do is restart the web server. I'll close it down and restart it, which is why I've got this XAMPP control panel open. The service we need to need to stop is the web server, which is this top one. So I'm just going to click on stop, wait for it to do it, like so. If I just go to Chrome now and hit reload, you see we'll get this, oops, Chrome can't load this page, sort of page. Um, so let's go back here and restart the server. Wait for it to do it. Come on. See, this is why I use Linux. There we go. Uh, and if we reload this page now, we get this error message, notice undefined variable var on line 3, uh, which is very similar to the one we got from Linux, although the path is slightly different, obviously. <coughs> uh, so yeah, that's error reporting. Um, so I will show you briefly how to do it for Linux distributions as well. Uh, for that, I'm going to be using the terminal. Um, and actually, I'll actually set it to hide eNotice message so you can see that it's working. Um, basically, we're going to be working with the command line interface to my development server, which is local, this address. Uh, I've already logged into it, so yeah. Um, if you're a Linux user yourself, then this should be fairly fam familiar to you, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. But we're going to use the nano uh, command line text editor to edit the slash etc slash php. Uh, I think it's just PHP, maybe it's 5, um, slash p uh, apache slash php.ini. So this um, thing here is the location to the file. I'm just going to open it with nano, so let's just hit enter. You see, oh well, I've configured my um, PHP setup quite um, a lot since I installed it. So this top bit looks completely different to yours. Uh, I've also removed quite a lot of comments, and this is a custom extension that I've been developing. Um, so if we just scroll down in this file, keep scrolling, uh, I see we could remove that about php.ini later on. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, same thing as before, it's the exact same file, but it starts off as the exact same file. Any options, language options, we want error stuff. Just keep going down, Get flush. On serial safe mode, uh, disable functions, we're getting close, uh, miscellaneous resource limits, error logging and error handling and logging. So you see, if I keep going down a bit more, you see here is the error reporting directives we had in Windows. So if I now set this to um, an squiggle e underscore notice, like so, and just control X gives you this message save modified buffer 
Uh, you just press Y, and then it asks you for the file name, which is defaults to the same. So we just hit Enter, which has now updated the php.ini file. If I go back to our browser now, you'll see the same thing. It won't update, which it hasn't, because it only takes an effect when you restart the server. So to restart the server on a Linux distribution, you do slash etc slash init dot d slash the web server, uh, and then you do restart, which is the command to have the server restart itself. And it just does that, like so. If we reload our page now, you see the message is gone. So we've actually successfully disabled the notice messages that we want to enable. So I'm just going to very quickly go back into the file. Um, useful tip, control W is search. So you could search for error reporting like so and hit enter and it'll jump directly to the error reporting directive and then you can press the end key and then just delete the bit you don't want. Control X again to save. Yes, same file name. Up to up by the way, up and down keys scroll through your command history. So we can now go up to the command we entered to restart the server and just hit enter again and it'll restart itself and it's done. So if we reload the page now you see this notice message has come back which is what we were actually trying to do. Okay so these messages usually come up um, <coughs> um, when you try to access a variable that doesn't have a value uh, or like say if you had a form that you, let's just quickly do a quick form here form, actually no we'll use the get information so say if you had a form that submitted via get and then you did, you wanted to just like, actually no, let's do, say you had the user type in their name, you could do name equals get name, uh, like so, and then you could do something, I'm just going to output it. Um, so say this, it would in issue the undefined index name um, error, because on this line we have, we're trying to access get name, but there is no, that doesn't exist. Um, if I just do a quick print underscore r above it of I'll hold get array and reload this page you see we get the empty array and then still the notice message because the error is still there uh, but if we add in this name equals me you see we get um, the fact that name equals myself uh, in the array now and we get the output because that's what we were doing um, so this error has gone now uh, we've removed the error uh, but what we really would like to do to make it a bit more permanent is to first check if the variable has a value before we try to output it. So we could do if is set get name like so. Although this would still cause a problem because if we reload the page, it works fine. But if we remove the get information, you say we get undefined variable name because now what we are doing is only defining the name variable if the get variable exists and then we're still trying to output it anyway um, so what sort of makes a bit more sense to me anyway is to not define things as a variable just to use them directly unless you want to like uh, do some escaping or some sort of more complicated function stuff so this now will only output my name if um, it's in the in the URL so if I put it back uh, you see it reappears and there are no errors here um, so yeah that is all there is to say about this really um, one thing I can mention is that um, say if we have echo get name like so this will still work so if I reload the page now you see we get notice use of constant name assumed name what this means is that PHP has looked fa uh, it's got to here. It's treated this as a constant because that would be the syntax of a constant, no quotes. Uh, it's it can't find that constant, so it's assumed it's meant to be a string with the quotes around it, and then it's tried to use that. So we get this message, which again would be very useful if you had defined a constant and then spell it wrong. Uh, and also, it's just sort of best practice to quote your strings because it stops PHP looking for a constant first, so it'll be a bit, little bit quicker. Um, so obviously the fix for that is just to put the quotes back, like so. If we reload this, the error will disappear. Okay, so uh, in this video we have talked about the error reporting directory directive and shown a few examples of notice messages. So hopefully this has been a bit a bit more more useful than my last video. 
Uh, so thanks for watching, and yeah, that's it.